see Asher in the chat saying why are we always so trolly in this chat are we misbehaving because it's trance no trust me it's usually worse than this even with hard music this all stems as an ongoing joke from the problems that we had I say the problems in air quotes with eye opener a brisk and tricksy track in my top 100 rave anthems of all time and people were not happy that it wasn't higher on the list. Which started the justice for I open a track, which then started the thing that people just create the hashtag justice for whatever it is that they want to give justice to that day. So no doubt somebody that likes Miss Shiver Dreams, it's going to be justice for Miss Shiver going forward. But as I mentioned at the top of the show, don't take anything too seriously with the trolling going on in the chat. It's a good community here, it's good fun, and everyone likes to have a little banter in amongst themselves. So feel free to get involved. Okay, so I think that that's a fairly inoffensive, agreeable 40th track on the list, isn't it? I think I think it's a little bit more controversial because I know some other tracks that aren't included. But I don't think many people at this point, starting at number 40 with one track being played, 39 tracks to go, don't think anybody's too upset at Miss Shiver Dreams being number 40. 
So where are we going next? This is where I did want to get a little bit more controversial um, with a track by Kamui, which was a massive track in the tech trance scene. I know a lot of trance DJs love it. When I first listened to this track, I was thinking to myself, could this really be classed as trance? And I was listening to the drop, I was thinking it's almost more techno or is it hard dance or anything like that? But then I was thinking about the DJs that play it were firmly DJs in the trance scene. And if you listen to the break on it, it really is just kind of like, it really is just tech trance, but it's just got that tougher, harder edge, and it massively influenced a lot of producers going forward. This is Kamui at number 39 with Electro Slut.
So what are we saying? Is that a controversial pick to come in? And number 39, Kamui, Electro Slut. Again, I did see somebody in the chat asking, going, is this trance? And I did, I did battle with that internally, but I was listening to it. And it's like, if I did a top 10 hard house, this wouldn't be on it. If I did top 10 hard dance, I kind of struggled to put this on it. And I know DJs, you know, like Jordan Suckley and stuff, like they all hammered this. And when you listen to Kamui's music, I mean, it was, you could say like, you know, if you want to start going tech dance and all these, you know, made up genres of music that people just got to label stuff when it didn't fit exactly in a hole. But I think if you listen to the percussion, the beats, the breakdown on it, it just feels like a trance record to me. It's a hard tech trance record. It's very different than everything else. But yeah, tech trance if I had to give this a genre. And I felt it, I felt it could be on the list. And if it could be on the list, it had to be on my list. So in at number 39, is Kamui, Electro Slut. So we're going in now, um, number 38, and this is this is very much a straight trance one that uh, no nobody's going to argue about genres of music. And it actually wasn't going to be on my list. It wasn't on my list. But when I was um, sitting down going through music, I was going through it with my girlfriend, for those who are not regular on the stream. My girlfriend's way more into trance than me, and she's way more into trance than, you know, like hard music. That's her thing. She loves, like, trance and techno. So I was like, getting her to play me a bunch of music, just so obviously a lot of tracks that I would know to see if there was anything that, you know, that had escaped my mind that I'd forgot about over the years. And she played me a lot of stuff, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool, yeah. And, you know, kind of like, but it's just not on the list for me and there was a lot of different stuff like that there was one track that she played that of course I know it but then when I listened to it I was like oh damn that kind of has to be on the list and then when I was like shuffling things around it came out at number 38 it is just such an emotional track and the more I listen to it the more I think that maybe it should have been a little bit higher on the list it may be higher on your list but it definitely needs to be on this list in at number 38 is Chicane with Saltwater Thank you. 
I'm not seeing a lot of arguments against this one in the background now. Tony C. Campbell saying this is definitely trance. Speedy B saying this should have been higher, also lower, which is the usual results that we get at the end of these polls. I did see somebody mention that they didn't recognize this version of the track. I've tried to be as authentic as I could and not necessarily played the radio edits of the big ones. There's a couple of exceptions to that, but tried to play the version that made it a big hit. Like most of you know that tracks were always big in the clubs, in the underground, then they make it mainstream, then they cut up a little three minute version of it. But we're trying to be a little bit more authentic here and play the original tracks that were big in the trance scene. Kane Saltwater in at number 38, well worthy of that position, if not higher, I think nothing too controversial so far is there. And regarding the extended mixes, yeah, I thought like I, I explained just now why I've chosen to play the extended mixes and there's one track that features quite further up the list that I had no idea when I listened to the first half of the track I was like I don't even know this track it doesn't sound anything like it. and then as it slowly developed into it it made me think that how when we listened to the radio edit of it we only really got half the picture of what the actual track was so yeah I won't tell you what track that is yet I'll tell you after I've played it so 38, Chicane, Saltwater, so where do we go from there? Now the track that I've got coming up next, um, it's kind of an interesting one because you know that I do this stream regularly um, and I've been asking people in the chat to just fire names at me, you know, to make sure there was no tracks that I was missing in the Trance Top 40. Because obviously it's like, you know, I know the music, I know what I like, but you know, when we're talking of all time, you know, there can be tracks that, you know, you hear that you haven't heard for five years, you've forgotten about, and you're like, oh damn, I love that tune. So I wanted just as much information to build the list myself. Nobody mentioned this track track at any point during it and I never thought of it until I was randomly just sitting watching TV after I'd built the list and I was scrolling through my Serato library just to see if anything jumped out and I saw a remix of this tune in a different style of music um, and then that made me think is the original of that trance and I listened back to it and I'm like it is and I don't think there's going to be any controversy or any question with this um, it has to be on the list in at number 37 is C.J. Boland, the prophet. 
I'm here to tear down everything around you. And you know what I'm going to replace it with? Something new. God. The world of God. So take your bread and give it to the poor. What difference does it matter what you own? You have gold and silver, it's going to rot. And that rot is going to eat away your heart. All of you. There will be a flood and there will be a fire. Everything will be destroyed, but there will be a new ark riding on that fire. And I hold the keys and I open the door and I decide who goes in and who doesn't. The moment I let this track play, I saw everyone going, isn't this techno? And I'm like, eat a bag of dicks, this is trance. And then the beat started coming in, I'm like, it's kind of techno, isn't it? I was more focused on the breakdown and the melody. I'll still stand by it. This is an anthem in the trance scene. Because of the time it was released and stuff. Everybody to the whole 
I defend my placement of CJ Boland in this list. That's a trance melody, isn't it? So as much as I'm defending this being on the trance list, I'm thinking, if you put this on a techno top 40 of all time, would it be controversial? Honestly, I think it would be less controversial on a techno list. I'm still defending it. I'm still defending it. It's a trance track. Fight me. So number 37 on the list, CJ Boland, The Prophet. Regardless of what the genre Nazis out there are going to label it as, I think we can all agree it's a brilliant track, isn't it? And the melody's trancy. So where do we go from here? It better not be another controversial choice. Don't want to discredit the list too early on, do we? We're only at the top of it. So moving on now to number 36, Um, it's a track that holds kind of a special place in my heart because when I first started DJing around the late 90s when I was playing out, I was like strictly happy hardcore, that was all I cared about, maybe a little bit of Gabra, a little bit of drum and bass, but I was a happy hardcore boy. But a lot of the parties that I were playing at um, in the early days was other upcoming trance DJs. So you know when you hear a track so much, it just takes you back to a certain place and time. And that's what I like about trance because with a lot of the happy hardcore stuff and hard dance that I've listened to, play it year after year after year, I hear it all the time time and the nostalgia kind of wears out whereas you know so if I listen to like you know my music from that time it's like it's flooded with memories whereas it's like you know if I kind of listen to trance from this era it takes me that back to that specific moment in time and this one is a great one that does exactly that I think you know like I said I didn't want to be too obvious by putting all the big trance anthems in there because then it's not an interesting list but this definitely had to be in there for me in at number 36 is delirium the silence Thank you. 
Rintin asking if this is the Tiesto remix because that was the one that was always played in the clubs. Yes, indeed it is. Enjoy.
I think I've told the story before about um, one of the first, I say, quote unquote, residencies I had is on a Thursday night, the bar in Chester on the edge of town. It used to be empty. Nobody was ever in there. And they had a set of decks set up. So they said that local DJs could come, everyone play an hour each. The idea being that local DJs are going to bring all their mates with them to watch their mates play. The bar will be full and they'll make loads of money on the bar. So it's unpaid on that type of blag. So this was around this era, late 90s. Your boy Kutsky's got himself his first job, trainee engineer, saving all his money, buying records every week, buying all the latest hardcore. Of course, I'm always on at the end because I'm playing hardcore. A lot of other DJs at the time playing trance because trance was huge. I remember this track being playing and I'd gone down there with my mates. I was off work the next day. I was absolutely shit-faced. And I remember standing on a table going, yeah, with a beer in my hands, singing along to this, and somebody pulling on me leg and saying, I'm like, what, what, what? And they went, you're on next after this. I'm like, oh, shit, right, okay. And I'm going behind the decks and thinking, Jesus, I'm hammered here. And then, like, playing my first tune. And it's like, you know, when everything's so loud in a club, it's just going like, shh, 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 shh. And I can't hear my headphones. And I'm trying to mix. And I'm like, is this, is anything even in time? Can I, can I hear anything? You know, kind of like, and then I'm just like looking up at the crowd and I'm like, is everyone giving me a weird look and kind of fading one track into the other? And somehow I managed to fumble my way through the set. It was probably the worst set you've ever heard. It was probably everyone else was as drunk as me. So they weren't picking up on the terrible mixing. And I remember that was like a reminder the next day. I was like, next time you got a gig, ne- don't, don't get that drunk before you play. It's never going to be good if you get that drunk before you play. To this date, I've never got that, that drunk before I've played. I've been that drunk before, but I've never had to play after it. So that's why this particular track holds a special place in my heart, taking me back at that moment of me mate pulling me trouser leg while I'm stood on the table on that bar. I can't even remember the name of the bar. Was it Jones's? On Lightfoot Street in Chester. Good times. Okay, so we're going to be moving on from that um, to more of it. Definitely a trance record, definitely a trance record up next. There's going to be no argument. There's going to be no controversy over this one, but it was definitely also played a lot in the hard house scene. It was somewhere between the two of them, but it's definitely on the trancier side of things. So you just heard Delirium, the silence in at number 36. If you've just joined us coming in at number 35 is K90 with Red Snapper. Enjoy.
I see the debate raging on about hard trance. This is 100% hard trance, and hard trance is 100% going to be represented on this list because it's trance. Hard trance is trance, as is euphoric trance, as is progressive trance. Anything that I regard as being under the trance umbrella, by my definition, will be on the list. As I said on the end of the last show, it's not a democracy this, we're not voting it in. I'm deciding it's a dictatorship. But you know what I mean, if you heard this, this is a trance record, it's a trance record, isn't it? If we're covering the full spectrum of trance, this is trance. Malcolm saying, is there any Psytrance? Maybe. Maybe not. But Psytrance will be equally as valid in this list as Hard Trance is, that's for sure. UK Dave London saying, can you get happy hardcore trance? I mean, you can, can't you? Like, trancey, happy hardcore. But for me, that's where it's like, that's where I draw the line. Doesn't feel like it. And I was even thinking freeform. I'm sure somebody will mention freeform. That was really, really trancey, trippy, progressive hardcore. But for me, that was like a, sh- a subgenre of hardcore, not a subgenre of trance. Whereas this feels like a subgenre of trance. It's all arbitrary. Your list would be different. There we go, number 35, K90 with Red Snapper. And coming up next, a track which I would have completely missed off the list and I wouldn't have batted an eyelid and I don't think anybody would have called me out on it either. But somebody mentioned it in the chat. Again, apologies um, because I forgot the name because that that was just like a war zone in the chat when we were going through potential tracks for the list. And somebody kept saying the name of this track over and over again. And I thought they were taking the piss because it's got a kind of silly track name. And I'm thinking, oh, for fuck's sake. And then eventually it just came up so many times they were adamant about it. And I was like, well, let me have a little listen to it on YouTube. And I heard it and it's one of those <laughs> back to my youth moments because I had a CD back in the day from Platypus Records. And this was like really early 90s stuff. Now I was more into like, you know, rave music at the time, like, you know, kind of like, you know, the Prodigy, SL2, stuff like that. So that's, you know, kind of like what I was into at the time. But I had this Platypus CD and it was a little bit, it was it was too underground and credible and trippy for me to appreciate at the time. But you know, when you just listen to it so much, there was tracks like drilled into your brain. Anyway, number 34 is a track by Union Jack called Two Full Moons and a Trout. The moment I heard this, it took me back to my paper round listening to this CD. When you're trying to experiment, you're trying to find new music, you've discovered new stuff. And I had to cover something on Platypus Records and just hearing the name and seeing the, you know, didn't ring a bell, but listening to the music absolutely did. And I do believe that this is a massively influential trance record and I think it should be in my top 40 trance records of all time. Number 34, Union Jack, two full moons and a trout, enjoy. (laughs) 
So you're starting to see where we're going with this list. New stuff, old stuff, I say newer stuff, old stuff, underground credible, not so underground, not so credible, still in the list. Yeah, Platypus Records. I can't do revisionist history and say I was super into the label. I had a compilation CD like Platypus Volume 6 or something. And it was one of them that I just listened to it over and over again. I didn't like it as much as the stuff like, you know, like the Prodigy stuff, you know, because if you were listening to like, the Prodigy experience, there's a lot more accessible tracks, you know, when you're eight, nine years old. But I used to listen to this one to death. And then obviously now being able to look back on it, I can appreciate how far ahead of its time it was. And I can appreciate it for how cool and credible it was. It just wasn't meant for eight-year-olds. Number 34 on our list, Union Jack, two full moons and a trout. Right, okay, I did say to you, didn't I, that um, the list was going to be have some really early tracks that were super credible and chin strokey, but some obvious, more cheesy ones. Now, this next one coming up in the list, um, super commercial. Um, I absolutely love it. I still love it to this day. Uh, I would say it's a trance record. It could, you could argue it's kind of hard house or, you know, kind of like mainstream dance. It's not the most controversial example there's something more controversial than this coming up later in the list but i absolutely love this tune and the fact that remixes this still get played to date i think that it's just complete justification of why it needs to be on the list or on my list anyway in at number 33 uh, the man behind this project is in on the guest mix on keeping the rave alive on the podcast this week of course i'm talking about mark sherry as public domain in number 33 this is operation blade
Everybody in the place say ho! Public domain kicking it to you, man. Face in the place, London. 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 Face in the place, 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 face in the place
this was one of the tracks on the list. You, got, you know when you're kind of like smugly happy with, and it's like, yeah, no one's going to give me shit on this. Like, you know, you play something really commercial and cheesy and people are going, oh, it's not trance. You play something like a little bit out there and people are going, oh, it's not trance. I was like, this one. Ain't nobody arguing with me this. Everyone's going to like this one. Didn't see, I, I didn't get any shit off anyone. I don't think of this one. Number 32 on my top 40 trance list, Eves Deruta with Back to Earth. So where are we going to go from there? Where are we going to go from Eves Deruta? Okay, right. Normally I've been trying to explain the track first and then tell you who the artist is. Number 31 is Cosmic Gate. Now the question is, which track? Because my favourite Cosmic Gate track is Firewire. And it's not Firewire that's on the list. Because speaking of being a genre Nazi... This is one of the things that, obviously, it's like, you know, all done in banter and stuff. But the more I listen to it, the more I'm convinced that Firewire is actually an early hardstyle track. If you listen to a lot of what hardstyle was doing in the days, probably before it was even dubbed hardstyle, these dark, deep, moody, pounding tracks with a, you know, kind of like underground subby bass and no big melody on it. And, and it's like, I don't know, there's just something when I listen to Firewire. And then whenever I'm playing early hardstyle parties, I always drop that track in there, always gets a huge reaction because people aren't expecting it and it fits in there perfectly. So for that reason alone, I didn't go with Cosmic Gate Um Firewire on this list, but I'm playing um, no more than one track by um, an artist on this list. There's a couple of exceptions, like you'll probably pull me up on later, um, you know, to do with remixes and um, and different guises and stuff like that. But primarily, we're going with for no more than um, one track per artist. So I had to choose, and I'm going, okay, well, if I'm not going to go with Firewire, which is my favourite track, which other track could I possibly go with? Coming in at number 31. We have Cosmic Gate with Exploration of Space.
This is another one of those tracks, you know, when the melody fully drops in and you get the key change on. It's like a heart melter, isn't it? I always think it's a good way to describe it. You kind of feel it just go like, zoom, just like fade. I wish I could write melodies like that. Again, this track holds a really special place in my heart because of the DJ Isaac remix of this, which I used to play, um, still do play a lot in my sets now, but it was like when it first came out, it's like I'd play harder and harder and harder in the set to the point that I was playing pretty raw and chaotic at the end. And then I'd drop this track at the end of the set and it was that uplifting moment that you needed after it. And it always got a huge reaction. Not gonna lie, playing all these tracks out in full and then listening to Cosmic Gate Exploration of Space in at 31, I'm kind of thinking, should this have been higher up the list? And now I'm getting nervous scrolling through the list going, how am I gonna justify that this went above Exploration of Space? Well, that's where it is on the list. I stand by it. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Um, right, I want to go in for a hard trance record again. Again, if you want to start really splitting hairs, you could kind of argue that this isn't trance, but I won't, I, like, I'll accept arguments on other tracks. I refuse to accept an argument that this isn't trance because of the amount of tech trance DJs that still play this tune now. Um, and the artists that made it when they played definitely didn't identify as being part of the hard house scene or hard dance scene or, you know, whatever else you want to do. They were very much underground trance artists from Germany. So coming in at number 30 is DJ Shredder with Chainsaw.
What are you going to do about it? Beat him in his own game. Now here's my plan. <laughs> shocked by how many people are going this isn't trance i genuinely am i thought i was trolling it. i've never heard anybody argue that this isn't hard trance this is like you know and like i said though it's like you speak to all the guys like you know like uber drugs and all the guys from that camp they don't class themselves as hard house djs they're trance djs but just that dark acid hard trance that was like a massive movement at the time i'm sh- i'm genuinely shocked that anybody thinks that that's not hard trance in at number 30, DJ Shredder with Chainsaw. I've just posted now um, 40 to 30 up on all my social medias um, to try and bring some more people in there. So again, if you can uh, jump on there, like, comment, share, do whatever you need to do just to get that word out and hopefully we'll keep building the numbers as we go on throughout the show. And if you were pissed off by me coming up with that and saying that that was a trance record, you're really not going to like where we're going next. (laughs) Because I would say this one is is definitely a trance record. Again, I'm not accepting any arguments for it, but it is probably less of a trance record than the one we've just played. 
that seem to seem to rub a lot of people up the wrong way. In at number 29 is Kakuma with another race. To another place. Gonna take your mind to another place. Everybody is all one race. to excuse the unprofessionalism of me eating on stream but if you haven't followed me on twitch before literally the released professional presenter so yeah i'm on gwumpki polish shout out to kevin do raiding in with a party of 42 thank you very much kev Welcome to the countdown. Kutsky's top 40 trance. Trance in quotes. Trance. Classics.
one was arguing that this isn't trance, were they? I mean, wasn't it on Tunnel Records? Like the defining factor of German hard trance music in the 90s. J3 saying it's Makina. I see what you're saying with that, but at the same time, it's happy hardcore, you know, it's, it's whatever you want to call it. Oh, is this on EDM Records? It might have been on EDM Records, you could be right there. But it's still an awesome, awesome, hard trance track. So you've just heard a number 29, Kakuma, Another Race. Now we're going a little bit more traditional trance. Now this one, it's a track that it's like, obviously I knew it back in the day. Everybody played it. I listened to it all the time. I liked it. And it's like, and I never thought it would have been on my list. But then when I kind of think about what really sums up and defines trance for me, this track kind of springs to mind more and more the more I listen to it. And it's like, I want to have another good listen to it now and see whether I can like, you know, kind of like feel comfortable with how high I've got it on the list for what it is, because I really love that track, Kakuma, Another Race. I really love DJ Shredder, Chainsaw. The two tracks that came before it in at number 28 is Ratty with Sunrise.
No, technically it's not trance, more Europop. Of course I'm kidding. Definition of trance. No one can argue this one, can you? Mind you, how many times have I said no one can argue it? And then everyone comes on and goes, technically it's early hard style. It's trance. It's trance. Tony, my man, what you're saying? It's trance, isn't it? I'm sticking on this tip for this track. Coming up next, as we stay on that trancy tip. The undisputable trancy tip, that is. Trust me, if you like the controversial picks, it gets worse as the list goes on. There's one I'm actually dreading now. There's one coming up in about 10 tracks time and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, oh God, why did I include that? And why did I put it so high? I'm gonna get eaten alive for this. You've just heard Ratty in at number 28 with Sunrise. And now we move on. Number 27, I've played countless, countless remixes of this. And when I listen to the original, which is a straight trance record, listen to it, one listen, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be on my list. And it actually fell quite high as it goes. Number 27 is Four Strings, Take Me Away. The best thing about playing two of these definitively unarguable, strictly trance tracks is they're all crazy, crazy long in length, which means I could sit down, eat a full on three course meal, and now I get to go to the toilet and make a cup of tea as well. And we still won't even got to the next number. But yeah, I'll turn this one up so I can hear it in the kitchen. I love it.
see now the controversial part of this one. I was like, do I play the original mix or do I play the vocal mix that everybody knows? And then it's like, then I asked myself, like, is it a case of when this went commercial, they stuck a vocal over the top of it, like Tocca's Miracle? This is the one point of it, when I went with the non-vocal version of it, because I felt that this was more authentic to the trance scene. And that's the fakest thing that I've done on the list, because I don't know that it was. This was in an era, wasn't it? When a lot of tracks were big tracks and then they were like, okay, we need to make this mainstream. And then they stuck a vocal over the top of it. Poll's really interesting. So far, we're at 50-50. I thought everybody would have been all vocal looking at the chat, but no, he's now winning. Taking me higher. There you go, you're happy. 50% of people in the chat. Okay, so there we go, four strings, take me away. I will stand by with or without vocals as my number 27. I love it, it's just a great track. It's just got nice, feel good, plucky things. To be honest, like listening to it now, I'm kind of thinking from what we've played already, maybe it could have been a little bit lower in the list, but I'll stand by it, I'll stand by it. Four strings, take me away. Okay, right, that was number 27, so where do we go for 26? Now, this one's a good one, this, and I don't think we're going to get many arguments with people. You'll probably get someone... I don't know. It's, it's mad. What's blowing my mind about this more than anything is the tracks that people are arguing aren't trance. And it's like, obviously, the whole thing is subjective. It's just, you know, what you grew up with, what era of music you got into, you know, kind of like what you listen to, how deep into it. But it's like kind of it's been fun to see which ones are controversial. For me, there's absolutely no controversy on this one whatsoever. But it'll be interesting to see in at number 26, winding the clock back a little bit further than you may think with Yen's Loops and Tings. Ooh, the thing to keep the smile on your face.
interesting comment from Unmoon in the chat saying, isn't this too fast for trance? I think this was like 1993, actually. I did look it up the other day and I've forgotten already. That's what lockdown will do to you. But yeah, it's, I was surprised it was so early. I would have said, if you'd have said what year was this, I'd have gone 96, 97. And I don't remember it being this fast either because I've heard so many different mixes of it. But back in the early days, trance was a lot faster. Yeah, Rin Tin, echoing my thoughts there. Early trance was fast. But if you're worried about BPMs of trance defining the genre, there's one track I'm thinking of. I'm not gonna like it. You're gonna say you're breaking the rules, Kutsky, you shouldn't be doing that. And I will defend it. As I have done for every one of my choices so far. I stand by them. But like I said, there's one that's coming up on the list just when I nipped out there to get a cup to get me cornflake cake that I made last night, because that's how rock and roll DJs are. Yeah, I was saying to my missus then, I said, like, the, a certain track that's coming up soon, I was like, the more I think about it, the more I'm dreading trying to trying to come up with my defence for this. But that's not for a little while yet, so we'll just focus on the tracks that I'm very confident on at the moment in the list. So you've just heard Jens with Loops and Tings in at number 26. Coming in now at 25 was a trance record that I used to hear people play all the time. And I was like, damn, I love this track. I need to get it so I can play it in my sets too, because I was like, this will work in hard dance. And then I'd always forget about it. Then I'd hear a DJ play it. I'd go, yo, what's this track again with whoever I was with? At the time I was like, ah, oh, yeah, of course, right, I'm going to get this one. Didn't get it for ages and ages. When I finally did get it, everyone Keeping else had played it to death. Life. But I still played it to death because I love it so much. And the interesting thing about it is, is it is actually produced by one half of Showtech. And it is a trance record. Coming in, well, I say it is produced by one half of Showtech. Co-produced, should I say in the written and produced, but not on the name, because you will know it as number 25 in my list, Marcel Woods, Advance.
in at number 25, Marcel Woods with Advance. Interesting fact, if you look at the written and produced, it is written and produced by Marcel Woods and Walter from Showtech, who you may know as Walt. And that's not to take anything away from Marcel Woods, because you may also not know that um, Walt let the music play, the more, you know, hard dance track. That was actually co-produced by Marcel Woods as well. So they were working in the studio on a lot of bangers at this time together. So I love this track and that melody. I'm a big sucker for not the big epic progressive melodies that go on for bars and bars and bars, but the short loopy ones that instantly get hookier. And I think that this is a perfect example of that. And a lot of Showtech's hard style stuff was like that. So I do think you can actually see a lot of resemblances, which is why it's so high on my list. Number 25, Marcel Woods with Advance. Saw people arguing about the BPM on this. Yeah, sorry, I'm playing it a little bit fast because I'm used to playing so many different hard style mixes of this track with the melody. It sounds weird if I play it too slow. And the track before was, but yeah, maybe it was a little bit too fast. Interesting fact, it was originally produced at 142 BPM and I played it at 149. So not a huge leap. But yeah, I specifically remember hearing Scott Project play this back in the day, and I used to be like, damn, every time we played it, I was like, what is that tune? I need to get it. I keep forgetting about it. Yeah, maybe it's not great that, like, in the trance scene, what's the motto? Are you afraid of 138? Trust me, 138 is not going to be an issue with some of the tracks that we've got coming up later one specific one that I keep teasing. Right, okay, let's keep moving on with the list. You've just heard Marcel Woods advance number 25. Number 24, I can't state how much I love this track and I don't even know what the original sounds like and this is one of them that I didn't go for the original. I have to play the remix because it's the remix that makes it so special to me and makes it is what it is and I was only going to include one track by each artist on it and it seemed like if we were going to do trance, and I was going to represent Derb at any point, it had to be the Derb remix of Space Frog, Follow Me, in at number 24. And the thing that makes Derb tracks so special and Derb remixes is the arrangement. If you listen to like, you know, the order that the beats and bars go in, very different than everything else. And it's what makes the track so special. Follow me.
Liam in the chat saying, you're all crazy. I'm scared of you all. Yeah, welcome to my life every time I press go live. Don't worry, it's a crazy, it's a crazy community on here, but it's all good fun. All the banter that you see is usually going on between people that know each other very well and they're doing it for fun. So yeah. Follow me. Don't tolerate any bullshit in here. Everybody is just having a bit of banter and good fun and a good laugh. This one in the background now. At number 24, we're working our way through the list. Space Frog, Follow Me, Derb Remix. When I was putting together this list, I was like, I have to give the original mix of this a good listen. And I listened to it, and it's it's just it's just a, a decent trance record. It's, it's the Derb Remix of everything that makes it amazing. Everything Derb Touch. Just such fans of their work. And Derb in themselves, I don't know what genre I would... I mean, are they hard trance, hard dance, early hard style? It's somewhere between all of that and then totally unique as well, isn't it? This one, definitely a hard trance remix. So many different remixes of this track as well. And I think this one just stands the test of time. And speaking of tracks that's, that have the... I can't even talk. This is where it's turning into such a long day. That stand the test of time very well. We're going way back in time now for a hard trance. We were talking earlier about hard trance music being a lot faster back in the day than it was now. Tougher, harder, and faster. Now, a lot of people would want to go, oh, no, that's hardcore. But it wasn't hardcore back in the day. It never was. It was always trance. You listen to, like, you know, it's hard to differentiate between a lot of early house and early hardcore because the music evolved over the years. So this is very, very firmly a trance record in at number 23. Winding the clock way back with Nostrum, Brainchild. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm really glad this one's gone down so well in the chat. I was thinking about having it higher in the list, seeing loads of people going, this should have been top 10 or it should have been top five. You don't know what's above this in the list yet. That's all I can say because I think I love this tune as much as all of you as well. Nostrum Brainchild. dread in this next one. Nostrum Brainchild in at number 23. Absolute anthem. What could possibly, possibly top this in my exclusively trance top 40? I said, you know, like the more, you know, when you look at a list and you put it together and you're kind of really confident in it and you listen to music and you're confident with your decisions. And I've been confident in defending everything that I've played so far. And then I was like scrolling through the list to see which other ones might draw ire from the chat. And I saw this one, I was like, oh shit, this one's gonna be a tough sell. It's gonna be a tough sell. My justification for this being there is one, I love it. And two, I don't really know what other category I could put it into if I didn't call it trance music. It got played at all the major trance parties, you know, in the late nineties, everywhere. It was also a commercial success and it also got remixed into a lot of different tracks. But where did I hear it get played all the time? It was played at Gatecrasher, it was played at Cream. You know, it always got a big reaction from everyone in the crowd, which would assume that, you know, it's a trance record, wouldn't it? You'd think. I'd stand by it. The in at number 22 on my list, the absolute trance classic that is Zombie Nation, Kerncraft 400. <laughs>
was expecting a lot more heat in the chat, to be honest. I thought people were not going to like it being on the list and agree that it's not trance, but I think Speedy B set a poll up. 76% of people agree with me that it should be classified as trance. I'm happy now. I feel relieved. But I'm surprised that more people were kicking off about public domain not being trance. Snuffleupagus, thank you very much for gifting out the subs to the community. Thank you. And welcome to all the new guys in the chat tonight. It's going to be fun. We're not even halfway through yet. people in the chat as well were shouting out Techno Boy. This mix in the background, which was the mix that everybody played, was the DJ Juice remix, spelt G-U-I-S. Who's our good friend? Techno Boy, Cristiano. DJ Juice before he was Techno Boy. If you want to know more about this track, there was a brilliant Vice documentary. But when I put this on the list and I was telling my missus about it, I went to show her the Vice documentary. It's been removed from YouTube now. I think all parties that were involved in this release when happy with the result and the outcome of it which is sad because so many people love the track but yeah I'm sure you can find that online So number 22 on the list is Zombie Nation with Kerncraft 400. Don't get it twisted. A lot of people say Kerncraft 400 and the track name is Zombie Nation. No, it's the other way around. Doesn't make sense the way it is, I know, but that's the proper way to label it. So where do we go from here? Right, this next one is another straight trance track, like, you know, an unarguable trance track. And it, the reason why it holds a special place in my heart, I mean, there's like, there was literally kind of like 50 of these tracks that I listened to and it takes me back in the day. I pl- The second track that I ever played in a club was a remix of this track that's coming up next. So picture this, your boy Kutsky's playing down on City Road in Chester nightclub. There's a DJ competition going on down there. I've been, you know, a bedroom DJ for like, you know, three, four years, just playing to my bedroom walls, recording mixtapes. I think I'm the man. Now this is the moment that I'm going to go out. Of course, I'm playing hardcore, so I'm on at the end of the competition. My stomach's in a knot. Everybody else is, you know, kind of like, you know, playing and going on. All the friends are there. No one's dancing. There's no party vibe. Everyone's just sat around the side having a drink. It's a week night. So I rock up. I play my first tune. I play a remix of um, Baby D, I Need Your Loving. Big pianos at the beginning, Happy Hardcore. I'm thinking I'd win everybody over. Everyone's looking at me and they're like, oh, this is interesting. He's playing Happy Hardcore, but he's playing tracks that we know. So I've still got to start mixing now. So the first track that I ever mixed was a white label hardcore bootleg that was just had B&H Volume 2 on it, which was a remix of the track, which is next in our list at number 21, Paul Van Dyke for an Angel.
Yes, in the background now, Paul Van Dyke for an angel in at number 21 on my top 40 countdown. So we're halfway there already. We only started on Thursday as well. It's amazing how tracks in the trance scene go on for so long, isn't it? I'd be remiss if I didn't give myself a little plug here. Obviously, the reason why we can do all of this type of stuff is because we're all in lockdown at the moment, isn't it? No one's got anything else to do, any clubs to do. I've certainly got no gigs to play and I haven't for over six months now. I think March, mid-March was the last time I played a gig out in a club. So I've kind of dedicated myself to doing a lot of this Twitch live streaming and putting together these long streams, um, three three streams a week uh, and then at least once a month we do like a breakfast show um, every morning of the week and then we do these big like long format shows like this if you would like to help support me um, doing this what I am an easy way to do so is to buy me a virtual beer using the command beer down there if you type exclamation mark beer in the chat um, a bottle reply with a link where you can buy me a virtual beverage for three pounds and that helps me out a lot at the moment obviously with no gigs and you know kind of coming out the other side of it and stuff like that and um, so I would appreciate the support if you're willing and able to do so. My little sales pitch of it being is if I rocked up to your house and played you, hey, do you want to wear my top 40 trance tracks, played you all the records and explained it all, would you give me a beer? You'd give me a beer, wouldn't you? You wouldn't be that mean. You'd, you'd offer me a beer. Uh, I'm virtually coming into your house to do it, so you can virtually buy me uh, a beer using the beer command down there. So I just wanted to give that a little plug in case um, you're new to Twitch or you're new to, new to my channel. That's a great way that um, people have been helping support me at the moment, so I'd appreciate that. Um, it gives you a chance to leave me a little message uh, when you do that, and I will be reading out those messages at the end of the show. I just don't want to bog down things too much now, but I did want to give that a little plug. So thank you for the support, if you're willing and able to do so. Now, as we move on, on to the top 20 halfway through the list this one I broke the rules a little bit because I was saying one track by each artist now there's a solo track by this artist in the list um, but I also wanted to include this Keeping remix as well because number 20 is Hens and Cold second trip and I was listening to the original of this it's great but it, I just didn't feel like I would be doing you justice to play you the original mix when I could be playing you the Scott Project remix in at number 20. Let's do it.
yeah, it has to be said, this track has aged very, very well. I think we can all agree. Again, the Scott Project remix. It's like the original is great, but then you listen to the Scott Project remix and it just didn't feel like I'd be doing it justice to play the original, just not to include a Scott Project remix again. and cold second trip scott project remix in at number 20 so we're officially into the top 20 trans anthems of all time as dictated by a hardstyle dj so where do we go from here um, another straight trance that i cannot deny i love and also warrants being so high on the list. The interesting thing is the artist accreditation on this next track that's coming up. Because I was kind of arguing with people a little bit in the chat. Because I thought originally it was a remix that everyone played. Because the original wasn't even a trance record. And then everyone was going, no, 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 no. The original is a trance record and it's better than the remix that you're talking about. So I'm like, well, I'm going to have to go and check this because I was pretty sure I was right with it. And unless you know more than me, which you probably do when it comes to trance, then you're going to have to correct me. Coming in at number 19 is William Orbit, Adagio for Strings. And what everybody was telling me are the original mix. And I was saying the original, the original is a piece of classical music. It's nothing to do with trance. And it was the remix that everybody played. And everyone's going, no, 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 check out the original, the original, the original. Turns out there was an original version of it that was uncredited that, to my knowledge, was a Ferry Corsten remix. So when you saw it in the chart as William Orbit, Adagio for Strings, what you're actually listening to wasn't the original mix, was the Ferry Corsten uncredited remix, as far as I'm aware. And then, of course, there was the Tiesto mix, but the, the non-Tiesto mix that everybody played was, in fact, Ferry Corsten. So, yeah, let me know in the comments if you know more than me about the backstory on that one, because it was causing a little bit of friction because I was adamant that the original was classic um, music and people were saying it wasn't. But anyway, it's a great track. Regardless of the backstory, you can debate it for the 25 minutes that this track's on for. <laughs> uh, this is number 19, William Orbit, Adagio for Strings, Ferry Corsten remix. Keeping the rave alive. Oh, 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 
We're all in agreement with that then. That the original William Orbit Adagio for strings is a piece of classical music. The dance version of Adagio for strings, William Orbit, that was in the charts was in fact the Ferry Corsten remix. And it's weird because for me, I wasn't massively bothered either way between the Tiesto version and the Ferry Corsten mix. When I listen to it both, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I guess the Ferry Corsten mix is better. But my missus felt really strongly about it. And then look in the chat, everybody seems to feel the same. I saw somebody, sorry, I forgot the name. Somebody said the Tiesto remix reminds me of puking. And it's like, that's possibly the worst insult you could give to a piece of music. So yeah, I don't feel that strongly against it, but I think this Ferry Corsten remix is the winner. Out of the two. Right, okay, where are we on the list? Where are we on the list? That was number 19, William Orbit Adagio for Strings, um, Tiesto Remix. And we go in a little bit, I don't know, is it a little bit harder, a little bit more underground, a little bit more hard trance, but it still definitely fits in the category of what we're doing here. Of course, representing the legendary Tracid Tracks Records in at number 18 is Kai Tracid with Trance and Acid. Hearing the music is just like seeing the colors of trance and feeling the power of acid. Trance and acid. Trance and acid. And acid. And acid. And acid. Trance and acid.
I do love this track, I really do. I especially love the breakbeat section, it's on the intro as well. Just the bubbly acid line. And the breakbeat kick and bass. Simple but effective. Number 18 on our list, Kai Tracid with Trance and Acid. No arguments there, I don't think. I think that's a good place for it on the list. Okay, the track that we've got coming up next on the list, I did reference it earlier on when I said th this track was the reason why I went and played the extended mix of all the tracks to give you full context of the track. Because when I listened to this, when I skipped through the first half of the track, didn't recognize anything of it. And then it was only the second half of the track I knew was the radio edit and the main hook didn't come right until right at the end of the track. And I'm thinking, wow. And then when I actually listened to it, I'm like, this is a masterpiece on its own and kind of just like boiling it down to its parts, you know, for the radio edit, I don't think did the track full justice. And I had actually heard it before, so I did vaguely recognize it, but I've not listened to the album version since again, I was probably like about 12 years old or something like that. When was it 1996 when this album came out? Of course, you're not gonna be able to tell me that because I haven't told you who it is yet. Again, you might be able to argue this if you wanted on genres, is it trance, is it not trance? For me, I guess if you listen to it and you categorize the genre, certainly in the first part of the track, you could say it's house. But the second part of it, I would argue it was trance and trance is the scene where this track got really big as well. So, yeah, not much controversy in this one. I don't feel in at number 17 is Faithless with Insomnia. Check out the full version.
And here we are Half past three in the morning I can't get no sleep
even bread jam when the light above my head went bam i can't see something's all over me greasy insomnia please release me and let me dream about making mad love on the heath tearing off tights with my teeth but there's no relief i'm wide awake in my kitchen it's black and i'm lonely oh if i could only get some sleep Creaky noises make my skin creep I need to get some sleep I can't get no sleep Faithless Insomnia in at number 17. Now, you see why I wanted to let that one play from beginning to end. And also notice there was a big drop in the numbers. About 20 people fucked off during that intro. Now, that is kind of like, that is indicative of the change in dance music. Now, you could never get away with that. I was looking at the time before the melody dropped in, which is the hook that everybody knows in that track. Six minutes, 55 seconds. And the whole intro, the whole first half of that track isn't included in the radio edits. It's just lopped off and it's just the second half of the track. And I wanted to play it from beginning to end. Part of me thought, I know like we'll lose viewers when we do that, but I wanted to play that from beginning to end so everybody that really cares about music can listen to it. And when the melody drops, don't you think it has so much more impact than any other version of that track that you've heard? That was the very original mix of it that was on the album. And I think that it is really so special because of that. And it's like when you listen to it. And then I would argue, like, you know, that beginning bit, if it was just the beginning part of the track, I would say that's like house, like acid house. It's kind of, it's not, not trance. The melody is, you know, arguably trancey with all the strings and stuff on the back end of it. But genre aside, that has to be on the list and it has to be high up the list because I just think it's so important to play a very long track as well. You'll never get away with playing that in a club now. You will never get away with it. I can't think of the context. Maybe at a Faithless concert or something, they will get away with playing the full version of it. But, you know, kind of people just want that instant hook, drop, move on to the next one, instant hook, drop. And that's just how things are, and I'm not being bitter and old or complaining about it, but I just wanted to play that in full just so you could get the perspective of what a masterpiece that was and why Faithless is so important to dance music. Right, okay, rant over. Because with me talking really deep and credible about Faithless Insomnia coming in at number 17, the track that I've put higher than that is much, much, much more frivolous and throwaway dance music but I love it most of you probably don't know this track but it means so much to me within the trance scene that I have to play it for you this at number 16 is Los Bonitos with the lights
yeah, I noticed a bunch of people in the chat are pulling me up that Kakuma were also Lost Bonitos. So yeah, I've played two tracks by Kakuma. That did slip under my radar, but you are correct. I know really it shouldn't be, arguably it shouldn't be on the list and it certainly shouldn't be this high because there's other tracks in a similar style of music by similar artists that you could argue were better. But it was just for me personally, like I think it was Hixie's mix on Bonkers 4 when he started with German Hard Trance. At the time I didn't know it was German Hard Trance, I just thought Hixie was playing a new type of happy hardcore that I'd never heard before. And he was playing all of these records kind of like, you know, on plus eight pitch at the start of the mix. And then he kind of went into the UK interpretation of this sound. But it was like the first four tracks on that CD I was just absolutely obsessed and in love with. And it turned out that that was just German Hard Trance at the time. Now a lot of people will claim this is Makina, won't argue that pitched up it's kind of happy hardcore isn't it i don't know but from my research backwards when i found these tracks the vibe was oh these aren't hard tracks after all these are just trance records from germany and at the time that was the vibe that was how people perceived them so a very personal track on the list that for me Los Bonitos, the lights in at number 16. And number 15, another absolute classic, one that everyone's going to know. And it's another one that is like genre of music. I'll accept arguments. I'll hear you out. But I'll tell you now that you will be wrong. This is a trance record from the very early days. Um, an absolute classic. It's been remixed into just about every different genre of music as well. But the original is still an absolute classic and an absolute banger. In at number 15 is Commander Tom with R Am I. <laughs>
Commander Tom, oh, am I super early one, but I would say this is a trance record, as much trance as it is hardcore or techno or whatever genres, you know, people went boxing stuff off into genres so much, it's almost like trance, techno and hardcore were like sub-genres of dance music before they really spouted into their own thing, absolutely awesome. So that was number 15, moving on to number 14, we're bringing things a little bit closer to date. Like I said, there's no particularly modern stuff on there because I uh, don't know, it's like, you know, when you're talking about your top favourite tracks of all time, I think there needs to be a little bit of distance. You can't say, oh yeah, that new Gareth Emery track that came out last week, it doesn't feel like, like you know, kind of like it's it stood the test of time. So we have gone for classics, but this one, newer track on the list, I guess, from the, the early 2000s, I think, would it have been? We played a remix of this guy before, um, a remix of Hens and Cold's second trip. Um, I always rely on his nice long arrangements of music if I need to go to the toilet for a longer toilet break uh, during my breakfast show. So the Scott Project track has taken a whole new meaning on um, for the regular community on this stream. But that's not to take anything away from his music because this is absolutely brilliant. There's so many different tracks by this guy, even under different guises that I could have gone for. I was going to go for A Rome Hands Up, but I didn't want two tracks by the same artist under different guises. Obviously, with the Kakuma thing, I've already broken that by accident. But still, I think that nobody is going to argue at number 14 on the list being Scott Project with Overdrive. <laughs>
the beauty of Scott Project Records. Remember when I was doing this with rave tracks and they were all like three and a half minutes long, I'm trying to have a bite of a sandwich in between tracks. With this one, please yourself a Scott Project, made myself a nice cup of tea there. You know, I had a chance to boil the kettle so I could make a fresh brew, go to the toilet, quick ch- catch up with my missus, make sure she's doing okay. Called my mom, went and saw my grandparents, came back and we still hadn't even finished the breakdown. I do love Scott Project tracks, absolutely awesome stuff. Scott Project in at number 14 with Overdrive. So where do we go next? Where do we go next? Unlucky for some, number 13. And this is where we're going to start getting some interesting tracks in the selections, I think. Let's say some interesting ones. I'm looking at the list now. I don't think there's any painfully obvious trances left. Like, painfully obvious. Like, Adagio for Strings was going to be in there. But every single one of them, I'm confident in defending, needs to be this high up the list. Coming in up next at number 13 is Robert Miles with Children. Thank you. 
I mean, what is there to say other than it could be very higher on the list and maybe higher on your list? Of course, rest in peace, Robert Miles. And a massive thank you from the dance music community in a whole for the contribution to the scene. It really is one of those tracks that manages to be uplifting, yet sad at the same time, melancholy. Kevin Do asking why the dream version? This was this is Robert Miles' children to me, this version. That was the one from the album, was it? I remember hearing that album and that album was another watershed moment. Like when I first heard the Prodigy Experience or when I first heard um, Hixie's mix on Bonkers One, there were those albums where all of a sudden you hear music that you haven't heard before that instantly gives you everything you need from it. And that was that Robert Miles um, album. Absolutely awesome. That's uh, Even as a kid, when I had next to no money, I bought, I can't remember what was different about it, but do you remember because it had the, the blue borders at the top and bottom of the album and then they released one with the red borders at the top and bottom and it had one bonus track on at the end. And, uh, you know, and when money's tight when you're a kid, I even bought it just to have that extra version as well. So, yeah, absolutely awesome. Uh, nothing more I can say than that. Robert Miles, more than deserved of the number 13 on my trance anthems top 40 list so we'll move on now another track which i mean arguably depending on how you know you're, you're breaking down your musical genres i don't think there's any real debate that this is a trance record but i'm sure somebody will as we're learning tonight um hashtag not trance that um this track in the background um it's just one of my personal favorites it holds a place in my heart from when i first started going out djing clubbing you know and kind of stuff like that you know around the 2000s um i remember getting this a double nuclear cd mixed by this artist one cd was trance one cd was techno this obviously was on the trance mix and i think it still stands the test of time absolutely awesome number 12 on the list is maro picotto with iguana
Shout out to Auto Bouncer in the chat saying I'd give anything in my life to listen to this top 40 live in Argentina. Mixed, of course. Well, I can't come over to Argentina and do it live for you, but on Tuesday's show, we will be doing a trance special where I will be playing these tracks all mixed together. The problem is, is if we mix it all together tonight, then the order of the tracks, you know, the flow of what works, obviously the BPMs are up and down each track between different subgenres of trance. So this is obviously more uh, presented, explained justifications for my reasons. But if you want to hear more music just in the mix, Tuesday's show, whatever time it is in the day or night that you're listening to the show now on Tuesday, we'll be having all of these tracks in the mix. So number 12 on our list as we approach the top 10, we're getting closer, is Maro Picotto Iguana. No complaints for anyone there. But this is one, a trance record, and two, well worthy of its position in the list. Going a little bit earlier in time now for some slightly harder beats. Again, that influential trance vibe. You know, when, I mean, I don't even know whether people were calling it hard trance back when this was released or whether it was just trance and this is what trance sounded like or, you know, a, a portion of trance sounded like. But it was definitely a massively influential track. And when I was listening back to music, this really stands the test of time. And I was thinking, this is why it came so high on the list. Originally, I didn't have it this high. And every time I kept listening to it in comparison to other stuff, I was like, ah, I like this. I like this. It's going up and up and up in the list. It just missed out on the top 10, but I think number 11 is a very worthy place for Wippenberg with Neurendancer. <laughs>
Baza B in the chat saying you should have just called this the hard trance top 40 with the odd one. Well, if you just want the predictable, usual trance top 40, you know there's a thousand playlists on YouTube where you can hear For an Angel back to back with Concrete Angel, back to back with Sandstorm. The idea of this is it's something a little bit different. You get to listen to my insight in trance music. Obviously, I come more from the harder styles of dance music. And this is all trance music. Don't get it twisted. Hard trance is a descriptive word before the word trance, which is the genre of music. So you're describing the type of trance that it is. It's all trance music. Except for Zombie Nation. (laughs) So yeah, if you wanted predictability, we said this at the start, wasn't going to be on there. Said it was going to be music that would appeal to a harder audience, not into trance, and it would be an interesting selection of trance music for trance fans to not hear the same old tunes in people's top 10 lists, as always. As we enter my top 10, which is going to be very unpredictable, I'd like to think. So this one in the background now, in at number 11, Wippenberg, Neurodancer. Okay, before we enter the top 10, I think we should explain exactly what it is that we're doing here. Now, for those who don't follow the regular show, I was playing a particular track on the show that I made a bold statement off the cuff and said, you know what, this is the greatest trance record of all time, which caused an absolute shit show in the chat, if we're being totally honest. And the more I thought about it, I was thinking, I might have jumped the gun. I I do like this track. I might have been a little bit more presumptuous. And that's what got it talking. I was like, well, what would my number one trance track of all time be? What would my top 10 be? Would it be my top 10? Would it be my top 40? And that was when we decided that top 40 would be good. And we thought it'd be interesting because I had such a different view on it than everybody else in the chat. It's like everybody had their perspective. I had my perspective. I love trance music, but I primarily come from the hard rave scene. So we thought it would be interesting to do this top 40. Now, as we enter the top 10, coming in at number 10 is the track that I declared to be the greatest trance record of all time. So it was quite a bold statement. As I revised my list, it turned out that I found uh, nine other tracks that I like more than it. But I still think this is more than warranted being number 10 on the list. Slightly controversial, maybe I will defend this. There'll be no argument that this is trance, but depending on um, your love of music and your love of tracks. But I will defend to my death that it should be in the top 10. Number 10 is DJ Kim with Jetlag.
college. Keep him Barrett, alive, alive. Leave go. Monitor 8 is on frequency 120.55 and call me back. Please acknowledge. Arrow 5, Romeo Hotel. We'll go. Barrett 4, leave the go. Major D, the last clear. Keep him alive, alive. Talking to me. Arrow 6, 6, Tango. We've got movement in sight. We'll get away. So I'll concede it might have been a little bit of a bold statement off the cuff saying that this is actually the greatest trance record of all time. But there's just something about this track and the melody. And I have to shout out Alpha Zone on the remix as well, because I think that that's a big part of why I love this track so much, because I love all of Alpha Zone's stuff. But it's just the chord progressions on it, you know, when the chord changes, it just gives you that melting heart feeling when you're like, oh, just the, just the melody, everything about it. Absolutely love this track and more than worthy of its place, sitting at number 10 of my top 10 trance records of all time. So as we're keeping moving on with the list now, um, we're getting into the real anthems. And for me, it's obviously, this is my list and it's kind of, it's a, 
I really enjoy music that I think that shaped the way, you know, that you can look back on it over time and go, this is still so good. And you know, tracks that you listen to and you go, I can't believe that that's that old and it was so far ahead of its time. So you're going to start to see that come out more as we move through the top 10 list in at number nine. I didn't realize it again. I've heard so many remixes of it. I didn't realize that the original was this old and then listening to it, how damn cool it still sounds today. In at number nine is Legend B with Lost in Love.
shout out to Ickle Growler saying this top 40 has been amazing cut ski glad you've enjoyed it a bit of controversy in there thrown in but the one thing I don't think anyone can disagree with awesome tunes from beginning to end and we still haven't barely scratched the surface on the top 10 in at number 9 in the background now legend be lost in love Auto Bouncer saying Paul James. Yeah, it was the Paul James mix of this that I played a lot. Which is why I kind of associated it being more of a hard house record. But I didn't realise how much faster and trancier and earlier the original was. So absolutely awesome stuff. Don't at all kind of... I've got no regrets with putting that one so high on the list. Uh, The track that I'm playing next, it's on a similar vibe, if we're being totally honest, with that really early trance sound, you know, when dance music was really starting to develop. And there was a club in Belgium called Cherry Moon, where it was a lot of like, you know, I suppose in a way early hardcore as well, but mainly like kind of early trance and techno was played down there. Now they had a record label, um, Cherry Moon, as well. No, well, yeah, it was. They were releasing music under the Cherry Moon tracks, guys, which was actually coming out under Bonsai Records, which you'll all know being a massive track as well. So this does have to play a super important part of the early development of the trance scene, and it's definitely one that a lot of people um, that are into hard music are going to recognise from the remixes that followed. So coming in at number eight is Cherry Moon tracks with the House of House. <laughs> Thank you. 
I've just noticed some people in the chat saying that this came out in 1998. It was way earlier than that. I think it was 1994, because it was definitely one of the early releases on Bonsai Keeping Records. Definitely not 98. Yes, number eight in our list, Cherry Moon Tracks, The House of House. Again, absolutely love this track and I can't overstress the importance and significance of it. In the trance scene and in the harder styles of dance music as well. I was just having a quick look then at who was behind um, Cherry Moon Tracks. A lot of big names, including Eves Deruta was in it as well, who we played earlier in the show. So, next on the list, number seven. This one I didn't think would be super controversial, but just because people have seemed a little bit weird on tracks that I thought were dead locks on genre of music, I was like, everyone's going to agree with me on this, and some people have been really upset about some things that shouldn't have been in the list. Like, like you know, technically that's not trance, technically that's not trance. So now you've got me wondering about this one, of whether it should or shouldn't have been on the list. But for me, when I think about that trance sound of like maybe 96 era, you know, where it was kind of going mainstream, the acts that were playing big stuff, you know, the tracks that were coming through, and then not just that, the amount of, I know this isn't black and white, but the amount of scenes that have remixed this tune is specifically more in the trance. And where I heard this track played more was always in trance clubs. So there's no doubt that it had to be high up there on the list if you are going to class it as trance. A slightly more commercial record with an underground background. Number seven for me on my top 40 trance records is Underworld with Born Slippy. Boys, you are the lipstick boys, you are the beautiful boy, and 
I'm seeing a bit of discourse about the genre of this. People generally happy it's being played, some people not so happy that it's being classed as trance, and many people saying they never really thought what genre of music this is. And that's one of those things that I never really considered what genre of music it is. I just assumed it was trance, which is why it's in my list. And in my defense for that, when I first started going out clubbing, I was like, that was like 1998, and I was going to Cream, and I was listening to Darren Emerson in the courtyard playing Born Slippy and everybody going crazy. That's pretty much trance for 1998. I know there's other stuff, you know, there's the, the, obviously trance is a wide genre of music, but if I was going to call this a genre of music, I still categorize this with trance, and I stand by my decision. And a note to those going, it was just a commercial track. No, it wasn't. Same with a lot of these big commercial tracks, air quote. They're just underground anthems for many, many years. And then they get released commercially and they make a three minute radio edit. Like a lot of Prodigy stuff. People say like, you know, Charlie, they're going out as a pop song released for the charts. Your Love and stuff. And it's like, these tracks were played in raves like long before they got picked up. Baby D, Let Me Be Your Fantasy, released in 1992, underground club anthem, absolute rave anthem, went away for two years. Then it got picked up by a major label, released in the charts in 1994, and it was a UK national number one in the charts. So people see it as being a commercial record from 1994. No, underground record from 1992. Don't be confused just because it's had commercial success that these tracks are like pop records designed for the charts. And with that defense, I rest my case. So that was number seven. Borderline controversial, I think, but nobody is gonna argue with the next selection. Now, the only thing that people can kick off about this next one is people may argue that it should have been higher on the list. I'm that confident that everybody is gonna love it. And this is another one of those tracks that's kind of quite deep. It's a little bit slower. It's very long and it needs to be played from beginning to end to fully appreciate what this is. But this track really sums up to me what trance music is, as in taking you on a journey, the flow, everything about it, and it is just aged perfectly. In at number six is Age of Love with The Age of Love. Come on. Come on. 
dance with me, come on, body or dance with me, come on, body or dance with me, come on, body or dance with me, move your body or likes a bit. No controversy with number six on our list, eh? None at all. Number six of my top trance, top 40. Age of Love with Age of Love. Jam and Spoon remix. As yeah, as DJ Gap says as well, rest in peace, Mark Spoon. It kind of holds a very sentimental um, value to me, this track, because I remember when Mark Spoon passed, I remember hearing Annie Nightingale on BBC Radio 1 when I was driving home, you know, crazy hours of the morning after doing a radio show when I'd just been taken on to Radio 1. And I was listening to Radio 1 on the way back, you know, with my fel- now fellow presenters that are on after me. Annie Nightingale's playing and she played this track and I was so excited when she played it and so saddened to hear that she was playing it because uh, Mark had passed. So yeah. Absolute classic um, Age of Love with Age of Love. Jam and Spoon remix, right? Quick plug as well. Um, obviously, what we've been doing here with the show, I know a lot of you have been um, locked in. If you would like to support me here with these streams, obviously, because this is my new residency, you can use the command down there, buy me a virtual beer, and I will be giving shout outs to people at the end of the show um, who are helping support me with this tonight. Um, really appreciate that. As we move in to the top five now, we're here already. Okay, this one, it's one of them. Maybe people would argue, oh, you shouldn't have this so high in the list. You shouldn't have it so high in the list. I want it this high in the list. And the fact that it's been remixed so many times, every time it gets remixed, it becomes the biggest track in whatever scene it's remixed into this time. It's like the melody has completely stood the test of time. A lot of people probably don't even know where it comes from now because there's been so many anthems that use the same melody. So we are going in now as we crack the top five for DJ Panda with It's a Dream. 
More divisive than I thought it was going to be. Uber trance there, standing firm, going, this is not trance at all. How's this not trance? Did you change to another channel? This is trance. This is trance. It's got to be trance. It's kind of cheesy trance, I'll give you that. All good fun, all good fun in at number five on the list. DJ Panda, it's a dream. Now, okay, this is where you get to the point where you could shuffle up any of the next tracks and you could put them in wherever you want for me. I did actually have the next track in at number one for some time because I believe in it that much. I don't really know what more there is to say than I think this one has stood the test of time in the harder styles of dance music more than it has in trance. But I will argue with anybody that this is a trance track it has to be in 
the top 40 trance tracks of all time, certainly for me personally, and I think for anybody this should be in there, um, and it could arguably be higher, but for me it is at number four. It is Jones and Stevenson, The First Rebirth.
Jippy in the chat saying he still thinks that DJ Panda was robbed, but he loves this too. Well, if you love this too, and you don't know what's ahead of it yet, he hasn't been robbed, has he? Your man Panda. He's all good. He's all good. He was happy with number five. I'm sure he was. So Keeping in the background now, you've just alive. heard Jones and Stevenson, The First Rebirth. Now, I absolutely love that track. Like I said, for a while, I had that sitting at number one, and then I swapped it for something else. And then once I'd swapped it to not be number one, there was other tracks that I wanted ahead of it then, which made me feel a little bit guilty. Uh, this next track is one that I absolutely love. Um, if I just told you the track name, Keeping some of you are going to know it, alive. some of you wouldn't. When you hear it, you will know it. And this was the only track that caused me to have to take a different track out of the list because one of my favourite trance records of all time is DJ Shog, Another World. I particularly love the Voodoo and Serrano remix of that. It's like a hard trance record, but even the original as a trance record by DJ Shog. So it's like I had that in there. That was going to be really high on the list. Keeping and then I remembered alive. that the melody on that's not original and it's from another track that I'm also going to feature in this list. So I was like, that's got to get the boot, that. And we are going in for number three. Absolutely love this track. Um, to be honest, I can't... I always listen to it in my head through the lens of it being a trance record. Now seeing what people define as trance or not trance in your perspective and in your opinion, it'll be interesting to see. But I don't think anyone's going to argue with this being an absolute classic and deserved of the place of number three, Dave Davis with Transfiguration. Good to see the support in the chat for this one. This is one that I'm glad we're on the same page for because it's so influential to so many people and it's just, it's just awesome.
Pity the Fool asking what are the most recent tracks in this list. Probably not very recent, probably like 2005 or something. It's probably the most recent. But like I said, this is my favourite trance anthems of all time. And I think they all came before that, that moment. There was other tracks that I did consider putting on the list that are obviously a lot newer. But I needed this list to be to be about me. So, you know, anyone can Google what's the biggest anthems, you know, and look at playlists. Like I said, look at a Spotify playlist that's been auto-generated based on the mo- amount, most amount of plays or something like that. But this, this type of stream only works if it's somebody's unique perspective. So there was newer tracks in there that ended up getting filtered out. Like I said, I started out with a list of about 85, I think, and then just slowly chipped away at the list. And that being said, I'm very, very nervous about this next track that I'm playing. I talked myself into putting it in the list and I was super confident. Fuck anyone that challenges me on this because I know I'm right with it. And as it's got closer and closer to me playing it and we've got that higher in the list, I'm very nervous. And then there's a lot of tracks that you guys have not classed as trance, which I thought were dead certs for trance. And that's also making me very nervous. Okay, I can't avoid it any longer, right? So I was thinking to myself, what you know, when I was coming up with a trance list and I decided that trance, what would make it on the list would be if I felt it was trance, if it embodied trance to me, I would include it on the list. And then I'd got my list and I'd sorted it all out. And then I was just looking for random tracks that I could just throw in. And then this track sprung to mind for me. And I was thinking, I can't include that on the mix. I can't because everybody will just go absolutely sick. Like even if I put it at number 40, people are going to argue and they're going to go, it shouldn't be on there, shouldn't be on there. It's not trance, this list's bullshit. Right. So I had to listen to it. And more so after I listened to it, every single element in this track is trance. It's just really fast. And then the more I listened to it, I was thinking I can include this in the list. And if I include it in the list, it's going to have to be very high in the list because I really, really like this track. It came as part of, I don't even really know the record label, unfortunately. It's not the best quality copy of it because it's so hard to track down now. It doesn't exist digitally. And it was the fourth track on an EP, which I believe was a hardcore EP. So, you know, four tracks, A1, A2, B1, B2. This was the B2. It got confusion over the name of it with it being part of an EP. So I'd heard lots of different names banded around. It was always difficult to find. It clocks in at 195 BPM. And I can look at the chat now. No one's got it. People have suggested some cool stuff that's in there. A lot of people aren't going to know the name of this track and it's going to scare off a lot of trances. Please stick with me on this and listen to it with an open mind. It was part of the Power Jam EP. It was the final track by an artist called R. Wagner. This is Listen Carefully and this is my number two trance record of all time. Thank you. 
stand by it I stand by it listening to it you listen there's no element in this track that isn't trance based on you know if you listen to all the tracks that I've played in this you know the elements that I look for in trance and love the kick drum it's not a wild kick drum it's a gated kick drum which was used in trance in the early 90s to mid 90s big acid line on it maybe the sirens a little bit hardcore but you know there was sirens and stuff ravey sirens in trance music in the early days platypus records and stuff bonsai records the only thing that stops this from being a trance record is the fact that it's probably twice as fast. But seriously, you know, this is 195 BPM. You played this at like 140 BPM, it would be a trance anthem. And I still think that it's got an awesome melody. Which leads us to our number one. And if you weren't happy with, um, with number two, I'm not convinced that number one is gonna make you that much more satisfied. Um, it's probably not gonna make many people very satisfied, but, um, you know, we don't really play a lot of trance on my stream normally, but when we do, there's one track that everybody always requests, and it's possibly the biggest anthem that's transcended the genre. Whenever I hear people, you know, you see it referenced in pop culture all the time, and I would say it's probably the biggest trance track that is like broken out of the scene. Now that, you know, most people that wouldn't know what trance music sounds like know this track. People talk about it, it broke America, it was really big absolutely you know kind of like massive track you know i can't overstate how big it is the guy almost built his career off this one track and i know you know a lot of people suffer like this when they have that one big hit that you know when they're playing um a set and they're trying to play all their new music and people just want them to play that one track that they're known for over and over again so yeah um 
it's it's kind of out of my hands this one really because I mean it is what Keep it is. If we're going to do a top one hundred, li- a top forty list, sorry, this has to be at number one whether you like it or not. And I'm sorry if it offends a few people, but number one is yes, you guessed it, Darud Sandstorm. <laughs> Come on, you all know you love it, really. (laughs) Shout out to everybody who tuned off in disgust already. That's not what we're going for for the number one, of course. It was the same troll that I played on the last one, but it's like it had to be done on this because it was a top 40 trance list, wasn't it? Right, okay, I did say uh, that number four was Jones and Stevenson, the first rebirth, and it felt like that could have been number one. And then when I listened to a bunch of different tracks, you know, in different styles and stuff, you know, within trance, I, I shuffled it around a little bit and then that dropped down there. But if that wasn't number one, I knew what definitely was going to be number one because it is a timeless classic still today. Um, it needs no introduction. It is number one of my trance top 40. It's my favourite trance record of all time. It is Sunbeam Outside World. <laughs> meant to exist in the outside world.
So as I've been mentioning throughout the show, if you've enjoyed the stream today, uh, this is something that we do regularly, so feel free to follow me on here. Uh, we do three shows a week, playing all different styles of music, mainly on the harder side of dance music, but we play hard trance and stuff like that. So if you've enjoyed the beats tonight, I'm sure you'll enjoy some of the streams. And then, of course, we do these big one-off countdowns, tournaments of music and stuff like that, you know, just to stay entertained all day. Um, obviously, I'm able to do this because we're in lockdown at the moment. No gigs equals no money for your boy Kutsky. So if you would like to support me um, putting together shows like this, you can do so by buying me a virtual beer using the command beer down there. Or if you're listening to the show after the fact, beer.keepingtheravealive.com. That gives the opportunity to buy me a virtual beer for £3. And then the sales pitch on that being that, you know, kind of if I came around to your house and played all these beats today, and would you give me a beer? Yeah, well, I've virtually came around to your house, so you could buy me a virtual beer, maybe. And that helps me keep the lights on throughout Corona times. So thank you very much for the support, if you're willing and able to do so there. Um, yeah, a lot of people hitting their tag down there, and you can use the tip up there as well if you're feeling kind. So a lot of people were asking, they were saying, yeah, cool, 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 but actually play Sandstorm. So yeah, so now we're done with it, I guess we can. Uh, we'll wrap this show up a little bit over on the studio desk, but um, yeah, I wanted to let this one run. If there's any questions that you've got on it, because there's a lot of tracks that weren't included on this list. Now, like I said, I wanted this list. I started out by thinking to myself, well, I love Gareth Emery, Concrete Angel. I love uh, John O'Callaghan, Big Sky. And now all these tunes have got to be in there because it's got to be the trance list. But these are just the biggest, these are tracks that I know are the biggest trance anthems. So do you want to see a list that's, what does Kutsky know are the biggest trance anthems? Or do you want to see what are Kutsky's greatest trance anthems? Because if everybody did this stream how I've done it, you could have that every week and everyone's going to be full of different tracks. Some would overlap now and again, but primarily it's going to be different. But just to turn around and go, Adagio for Strings is the biggest trance track of all time. It's like, fucking no shit, it's boring. And it's good to have a little bit of controversy with stuff. And that's why I threw a few little curveballs in there. There was a lot of stuff that I thought would be fun talking points for people. I wanted to make it so one, it would be um, for my regular audience, if you're not super into trance, it would be an interesting listen. There's going to be stuff that you know and references and stuff like that going on. But also for people that don't regularly follow my stream that wanted to tune in because they love trance, they don't just see me regurgitate all the biggest trance anthems back at them again, which there would be no point in doing, would there? Because you can listen to them already on your own. So I thought it'd be fun for people that are into trance. So maybe you can let me know if you're not a regular listener and you've stumbled across this because you like trance. If you found this kind of like entertaining because you're getting to hear tracks that you wouldn't normally hear within a genre of music that you like. Would have been in it. I don't think there was any Armin Van Buren in there, was there? There was a Tiesto remix. I was thinking about Lethal Industry could have been in there at some point. Baza goes berserk and says it could have been a top 40 bonsai list. Kind of was, wasn't it, in a way? Top 10 anyway. <laughs> it was getting like that. Right, okay, I need to have myself a sit down. Let's wrap this up. thoroughly good fun this afternoon wasn't it this afternoon and this evening and tomorrow morning and however long it went on for um right let me 